grab something that can scale out into a side lane to try to play a 1-3-1 one, one style? Or do you just kind of like hunker down, also grab for your big 5v5 and say, we'll see you there? Do the bans signal uh, any intent to you? So far, the Olaf has been taken away, obviously, with the Jarvan secured here for Gilius. Now they're going to start hitting the pool that Kadrill has to offer. And we've not spoken a huge amount about XL just yet, especially ourselves personally, but Kadrill was the star player, the face of the team at the end of summer. And he definitely grew as the year played out. And the man standing behind him, Young Buck, the six-star general, I want to see what impact he can have on this organization and this team. So kind of focusing into the jungle bands, because it's two 80 junglers, Olaf and Lee Sin band away, and then the Jarvan also taken. Kind of the last big 80 jungler left is Rek'Sai in the meta that we've seen. And with so much magic damage already on the side of Excel, there's almost emphasis that while he could grab something like a Gragas or an Elise, he really does want to find that 80 jungler. So this feels right now that Shaka are almost trying to force Kadrill onto something like a Rek'Sai. And I'm curious if he's just going to grab it and say, you know it's coming, I'm going to give it to you anyway, or if he's going to pivot and try to reach for something else. Okay, let's see what uh, this next round of draft offers us. The Zoe de LeBlanc, as well as Olaf Leeson with the final bands. Long, long hover on the center before a final swap away. And Niamata can have just said himself, he'd be surprised to see Forgiven play Cassio. I'm expecting this in the mid lane, of course, but it is an irony that it's locked in by Forgiven. I also really love the fact that they grab the Cassiopeia because she still works very well in a front-to-back team fight because she offers so much DPS to walk people down. There's a nice Yasuo, you hear the crowd uh, cheering for it. But it also means that she can play out in that side lane as well. So it diversifies Shalko's composition that they're not just about the 5v5. That if they want to, they have that Cassie that can be on a side lane with the jungler shadowing underneath her and go for those 1v1 duels. Okay, and the final lock-in is now going to be the Zaya. Okay, so we got the option for those 1v1s as you talked about. There's a lot of team fight prowess here on the side of Shelka. But let's turn our attention to the enablers to this Yasuo. Mickey grew as the year went on. He's got a couple of knockups in his kit. And that's like the pivot that I loved. I was like, ah, oh, it feels like Kadrill's really going to be forced on the Rex out here. But having that Yasuo in there for Mickey means that it's not as feels bad a moment for Kadrill to grab a good jungler like the Gragas because you just talked about how their synergy works at the level 6. You throw the Yes, you get the last breath, it feels really good, and it allows Kadrill, again, to not be pigeonholed onto something. And I'm a big fan of not being pigeonholed into eating all the damage. The Featherstorm from Zaya is gonna help Forgiven out in any of these engages. If he can avoid that key knockup, prevent Mickey jumping onto him, that is going to be crucial. The question is, how good is the old man's mechanics? It has been three years since he has played on this stage at this level. And there's a lot of expectation on his shoulders along with Shelfers. <laughs> We had the opportunity to talk to some of the professional players and word on the street is, is that Forgiven's champion pool looking a little 2016, but he is definitely trying to update it with this Zaya heading into his first game. So when we were in 2016, people were saying Forgiven's champion pool looked a little 2014. I distinctly remember that. We're gonna find out who will come out on top as XL Esports are taking on Schalke No Fear. Who will be able to rise to the top? We have a pause, unfortunately. Uh, all that build-up, all that hype, all that anticipation. But we can talk about our new sponsor. We can indeed. It's time to have a break, Heather. I don't know this. I don't know the song. Uh, to Kit Kat, come on! Oh, okay. You just dropped the ball there. <laughs> Very sorry. Nicely done. Uh, we're not doing this on purpose, I promise. I can't actually see the players talking to the referees on stage, but it will give us just a little bit more time. Let's zoom out and talk a little bit more. <sighs> I hate you guys. It's fine, it's resumed. Let's talk a little bit more holistically uh, about what we want to expect coming out of the early game. We already talked a little about the uh, Gragas implications, how we can, you know, combine with Mickey. But what else do either XL Shaka want to do? Um, so, of course, uh, as all early games do, my eyes are entirely on the junglers. The fact that we have Kadrill and Gilius in this game, and also the dramatic changes to the 2020 uh, jungle season. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard this multiple times. Caster's talking about it. You've read the patch notes. The main point for me is that I think with the jungle changes, it is much more important to be decisive in the jungle. Because again, if you fall behind, if you lose that experience lead, you can just get bullied out. And early game is just so impactful uh, for jungles to 
to not fall so far behind. So I think there's going to be a big gap between who is a good jungler and who is a great jungler. And the 2020 jungle season is just going to like rip that open. I think it's going to be very obvious who is able to read state of map, who is able to make decisive decisions, and who has the mechanical ceiling to execute on that decisiveness. I'm really excited to uh, track this throughout the split. We're three games in, and we've already got such high uh, anticipation and expectation for these teams and for these players. I'm just taking a look across the map right now. Uh, no early shenanigans. A couple of wards there placed by Mickey just as he steps up in towards the chicken camp. And it is pinged out by Shalka, so they're aware of the vision. Yeah, just trying to get information. But like you said, both teams kind of know where the scouting has gone down. So how it's going to... Uh, what's the word I want to use? Not infiltrate. Play out. Involve. Inform. Inform. There Thank you. I knew it was a, a big word like that. Inform <laughs> the, the jungle pathing here um, from both junglers and then who's going to find their opening to go for ganks. Because both Gragas and Jarvan have the potential to be early game ganking junglers. Yeah, absolutely the case. Uh, on a personal note, Noskaren, just a reminder, he has renamed for this season to Toure. Uh, we actually verified with the player how he likes to say it. Toure it is. I hate that skin. I know Medic and Vedas were talking about it a little earlier today, but it just does not look like it fits on the Rift. I have one rule. We don't talk about skins. I accept that. We'll move on. Forgiven and Dreams are uh, pushing forward already into Patrick and Toure, and you can see Gilius starting to clear out the bottom half of the map. It's an Infernal Drake up first, and we're just seeing trading across the map, so nothing really to speak of. Where would you expect action to strike first. <laughs> it's always going to be about who has uh, priority, who's going to get access to level two, level three, kind of these big ganking windows, and then what you're going to do with the priorities that your lanes create. Like, did someone overextend, expose themselves to a gank, or is this just going to be a quiet farm out, which either team would also be, uh, you know, more than happy to do. This aren't either team compositions that are really feeling a lot of pressure to execute anything in particular in the early game. There's opportunities basically every which way you break it. So unfortunately, we're going to be pretty reactionary to what we see going on in the map, which is an invade on Raptor Camp. All right, so Mickey already showing uh, an indication that he wants to step forward. Kedril right there with him. These two definitely developed a synergy over the course of summer and started to become heavy hitters here in the LEC. While down at the bottom lane, Toure is busy being hammered away. His HP down to about 50% as Forgiven and Dreams just continue to shove up. No noticeable CS advantage, and I think if Patrick clears up, he'll actually take a minor lead over Forgiven. Yeah, but just trying to be as abusive as possible down there on the Zaya and the Nautilus, knowing that you had information that Gilius was on the bottom side of the map, but Kadra was not. Also now spotted across from a ward that just died on the Raptor camp as he moves up to take Gilius' Krug camp, and Gilius in return then towards uh, the blue side raptors. Okay, gonna pop that scry as bloom, start to back away. So a little bit of trade of control in terms of where the junglers are spending their time. And this is just such a fun start because we get to have this litmus test of how both of these respective teams are gonna perform and inform the shape that they're coming out of the off season on. Because we've seen a, a wide variety of uh, plays and, and games today. It just makes it more entertaining to watch. I mean, the reality is, is it's just kind of like, who's built up the synergy? How are scrims going? Who's rusty? What did you do in the off season? I don't take a, a ton of stock or merit, especially kind of in the opening games of the LEC. It's always nice to see exciting games, but like you said, uh, lit a test or just a yep. gut punch. Where is the LEC at right now? It's been, what, four months since we last saw them? Yeah, absolutely the case. As it stands, Cadrill and Gilius, they're gonna be trading objectives and fighting over the chickens. Down in the bottom lane, Forgiven picked up the coal. First item back. No one will be surprised to hear that Forgiven wants to farm, likes to farm. Gilius is going to get a good chunk of damage onto Kedril before he gets caught by the body slam. Support's coming up from Toure, but Dreams is already there. Forces the flash from Kedril, and that's nicely done. I really do like that Shalka and Gilius in particular are actually just muscling Kedril out in his jungle. Um, he made use of that ward onto the Raptor camp. He has priority in the bot lane and forces out the flash. And yeah, Kajal does have access to his Predator boots um, and can still try to force these ganks. But Agragas without flash means that now all of his laners really do have to respect that and keep much more information. Oh my word, is this a solo kill? Flash is available, flash forward. Odo needs to chase down, expect. Solo kill's available, throws out the rupture. One more auto should do it and bring the hammer down. The slowest moving car chase you've ever watched. But in the end, 
and Odo does walk it out there. Very nicely done as Expect just miscalculated the damage. Yep, definitely not expecting the damage for Odo to secure. That's my second rule. Ah, uh, no, okay, okay. <laughs> no puns. Uh, I'm not going to be able to follow up with that one. You know, I do uh, freak uh, cosplay from time to time. You should know, you directed the last one. Okay. But, but nevertheless, uh, look, Shaka did a good job there. I mean, uh, correction, Odo did a good job um, securing a kill, just punishing, expect, overextending, but neither of them with flashes. So juicy targets for Gilius or Kedril. Yeah, uh, and then immediately Odo with his gold grabs the Negatron cloak and it's just like, okay, goodbye. There's no damage here. Like, I am perfect for weak side. I would still have kill pressure. I can now swap into the Ignite because I have the unsealed spell book. We've seen Braum, or Braum, Orns take this time and time again. Uh, it makes that kill pressure in lane really strong, and it also means that it is still very scary to dive in Orn. If they have access to the Ignite, and they have CC, and they land you on the tower, uh, he's like the perfect weak side top laner. And if you want to throw him a bone, give him a gank, usually it pays off. Yes, absolutely the case. And when you think about the targets that he's, you know, going to be aiming for, the Varus, the Mord before the Death Realm is thrown down. Um, fairly easy targets if they get caught by the CC, if they catch any airtime. Uh, I'll just be taken out. So Dreams has made his first little roam here. A couple of dashes come up. Very nice wind wall from Mickey, but the exhaust has come out. A million and a half twin fangs thrown out. Oh! oh, oh. Dage with the solo kill, despite the threat from Dreams. Yeah, hold up. We may have a bit more of a skirmish. Here comes three more. The challengers approach. And they are ineffective, it seems. Just Shaka, to walk about. Two kills to O, thousand gold up. And when you're late to the party, you don't get to play. Just giving them eyes, giving them a nice little wave, walking back to their lane, probably through that vision. We'll see if uh, Braum checks it out. But uh, Abba, Abba, he gets a lot of shit. Like last year, his uh, isolated deaths, some of the highest that we had in the league, his arch enemy was the enemy tower usually. But <laughs> it feels really nice just walk in this. Yeah, he had a. A, a moral support victory there from Dreams, but that was really just Abba flexing. So, good way to start off 2020. And the thing is quite interesting or quite fun to see is that um, uh, both Odawamne and Abadage have just outplayed their opponents. I, I don't want to discount the fact that Dreams' uh, dredge line obviously pulled out the wind wall that meant Abadage could land all of those twin fangs. But at the end of the day, flexing got themselves a strong CS advantage. Forgiven's already backed. He's down 11 or so CS, but he's got the cull. He's got those Berserker's Greaves. He still just wants to keep farming himself up. I do want to uh, put a magnifying glass, though, on watching Dreams and where he picks his moments to okay. roam. That time around, it was when Forgiven was walking back into his lane. But the thing is, is when you see a name like Forgiven on the map, you're like, he's going to demand that his support stands next to him. They're going to play hyper-aggressive in lane. You just heard Yamato Cannon talking about how they want to contest and challenge it and brute force you out. Uh, Dreams was a guy who was really well known for his roaming. It was roaming with self-made into Pyrian's lane and causing pressure there. So where is Dreams going to find his moment? Is he going to be on a leash to Forgiven down there? Or is he going to be a heavy roam support and try to get involved with this jungler? Well, so far the roams have been successful. We've still got this nice uh, extended farming phase. The first dragon's going to go down. Infernal will be secured. Just small CS advantages in the top and the mid. For Schalke, while Patrick on this Varus, 85 to 72. Gilius will arrive just in time to watch it go down. And there's no further follow-up, despite some sniffing around here. Dreams got himself the ability to chase down. And uh, waiting to see for the engage. That's a flash forward. The dredge line catches onto Toure. He's got exhaust and flash behind. Feathers have come out. There goes the engage from Gillis. He gets the knockout. Defensive flash from Forgiven. Expect is looking for a target of his dreams. That's going to go down. There will be a trade as Gillis manages to pick up Toure. So far, support for support. And the teleport was expended from Expect. Yeah, so in the end, I'm going to give it a slight advantage to Shalka, even though they didn't get the Drake simply because they got the TP and nothing else really happened, kind of a one-for-one -one trade. If that TP had come out and they got slammed in that team fight and they lost the Drake, then it's a very feels bad, like, Shaka, what were you thinking trying to take that yeah. fight? But otherwise, I really like how patiently they played it. It felt like Shaka made the decision, you know what? First few Drakes, also in my opinion, don't really mean anything. As long as you don't lose control of that soul. And you've heard it time and time again from all of the casters that it's really the dragon soul that matters. You can kind of give away those first few Drakes because the stats don't necessarily mean anything as long as you fight for the back three and especially that soul. And I feel like every single time the soul's been available, we have seen big team fights around it. And we've seen a couple of dramatic fights, in fact, over the course of today, as well as when we're watching leagues around the world. But I kind of to continue on it. I like the fact that Shaka were like, we're not going to try to force this fight, but if someone steps out of position, yes. we're going to try to grab the pig. And I think that was their goal there. It just happened to be a one-for-one -one trade. This is a really, really fun game um, because Frost, I'm going to try to paraphrase something 
you said to me about Schalke when you're talking about them, parts? <laughs> with them being sort of like a, like a benchmark type of team. When you look at the, the the experience of the players, the pedigree of the players, the expectation on their abilities, this is a team that if they can brute force their way through individual matchups, they can just pull ahead and, and start to take control of games. And we're kind of seeing that now. My prediction is, is that Schalke are effectively the, the benchmark. You must be this good to ride the LEC ride. And if you just get kind of buoyed around by Schalke's players just because of their raw talent or individual skill, then you're not going to be a top team in the LEC. So you see that XL are keeping even with them. Expect even flashing forward. He wants some revenge. Doesn't manage to get uh, the mace to land. Good damage back from the Bellows Breath, but Expect has got so much HP to play with. 150 to burn through, no flash to chase, and Odo's able to walk away with his life. Yeah, saving his flash as well, but that's still Excel now getting the Infernal, now into the Rift Herald. You can see that Cadrill has slipped in underneath here, really wants to use this top and continue to funnel golden resources onto Patrick here. And I'm just trying to see where the rest of the map is for now. Dreams currently not by Forgiven side, making his way to the top lane. Forgiven can smell it. He doesn't have yeah. flash. His ultimate is just about to come up. So very good map awareness to not step forward. Now bot. All right, the Orn Horn has been summoned. That's the flash. Will not find the knockup just yet. Gilius throws down a Cataclysm. And Oduwane picks up his second of the game. 2-0. Nearly a 20 CS advantage, and that extends the gold lead to 1,500 in favor of Shell. So where Forgiven could sniff that the gank was coming, unfortunately, Expect gets the memo just a little bit too late there as the 2v1 crashes. And all kudos here to Shalka. All eyes on Forgiven. All talk about Forgiven. Everything and stories and hype. And it's Odo and Abadaga that are stepping up and being like, <laughs> yo, guys, we're here. We're good. Because that's the thing to remember about this roster with Shalka is that it actually just isn't the Forgiven show. Odo had a phenomenal end was 2019 and he seems to have picked it up especially on a pick like Orn where you're like oh yeah you'll blow the horn you'll have the ultimate that's nice but you're not going to find anything else and he's found two kills well let's talk about XL and what they need to find to claw their way back into this game expect did almost win that 1v1 Cadrill and Mickey they continue to power up nearly level 11 on Mickey so that's going to be a big power spike for him on the Asura and I think it's really important that they're continuing again to funnel gold into Patrick because Varus is that two item power spike champ and by giving him access to a lot of these plates you're trying to springboard him there whereas Zaya is still waiting for the, the three items to really be competitive so it feels like XL have a very clear game plan with their composition where the window's that it's strong and they're trying to get there as fast as possible with that Rift Herald place yeah and you have to give all kudos they got the first Dragon. They got the first Herald. They are millimeters of HP away from getting the first tower. So that gold lead is, relatively speaking, insignificant. Um, as long as they can keep their you know, primary carry, who's the most farmed in Patrick's Varus, alive and well. Because there are some pretty hefty advantages from the mid and the top lane uh, from Shalka's side. Hold on, though. We're starting to have some of that muscle force come in. Nope, Shalka have Colt. <laughs> Pulled off for the blue buff. Thought for certain, or for a second there, that Gilius and Abadage were going to take a, a little bit of a walkabout down bot. Not this time round. Waiting to see where the next week play is. I mean, we're, we're 14 minutes in. Tower has not yet fallen, but very, very close to it. And if this Mountain Drake goes down uh, not too, too soon from now, 50% uh, odds on whether we're going to get ourselves a cloud or the Ocean Drake, uh, on the Rift, rather. This is a really nice window for Shalka to approach and to grab the mountain. I have a feeling that if uh, XL were actually in position, that Shalka, like the Infernal, would just kind of say goodbye to that one. It's not worth fighting over. We're not necessarily in a power point to do so. But because XL uh, didn't have the back timers, weren't on the map for the play, just good read. Shalka, like, let's go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit. We saw the animation there from the Observers. Uh, Cloud Rift. What do you think about it? Do you like it? We've had a lot of discussion about uh, the, the Cloud Rift in general. I think there's a lot of champions that really benefit from um, Cloud. Obviously, a champion like Nautilus is going to be the first that comes to mind, not only having kind of lower CDR on things like the ultimate. I'll hold the point. Well, we'll find out. Dreams is able to stay alive for now, but the rest of Shalko making their way in. Odawamne, he finishes a teleport. There goes the call of the Forge. Got flashes from Patrick and Toure for one TV I call worth. Yeah, there's that Braum specialist that you were hoping to see. And I just want to echo what we heard on the analyst desk, because I agree with it. I think Patrick and Torre are so hungry to prove themselves. Now they need to prove they can defend this tower or not concede more. Look at the minimap. Expect and Mickey are pushing mid and top. Shalka, however, they want to secure tower first blood, and I think they will just about get it. 
the first kill of the game, first tower of the game as well. Yeah, and it feels like a big win for Excel there. Yeah, they're fine to trade that tower, but like you said, it's the fact that so much damage is going up in both top and mid lane. Again. While you have a, a, a Gragas ultimate, Excel know that Shalka wouldn't be able to force the re-engagement, but Cajal can. Running, running, running! That was a very good Feather Storm, forgiven. Exactly the reason you pick the Zaya into this team comp, but it's not done yet. Dreams flashes, gets oh, the ultimate chain of corruption, goes between the uprights. Shalka do not concede anything, and now Excel are trying to force the play. Expect TP'd in, they should be able to get the tower. Yeah, that's the thing. Excel still have a position on the wave, however, so yeah, the ultimate from Varus splits the wickets, but kind of damage done. They trade one for one, you still got so much damage on the mid tower, push it all the way down. In the last two minutes, Excel still went out on that. Absolutely the case, and the fact that top tower can go down so quickly. This is such a close game, that gold lead, irrelevant. And now the first big ticket items are pretty much completed across the board. Proto Belt, Static Shiv, Blade of the Rune King. You know, looking on the side of Excel, um, and I'm very excited to see how these team fights are going to play out, because they can be very drawn up, but they can also just instigate people. If Abudage can find a petrifying gaze, there are plenty of squishy targets that he can melt through. I mean, in 2019, there wasn't a lot of tanks to be seen. In 2020, yep. the tank supports have come back. Orn's a big pickup into that top lane. And so team fights are getting a lot slower than they used to be. We were used to seeing all these assassins immediately come in and kind of blow someone up when you're on setup. Now, your vision game has to be that much better. Your denial game on top of it to create these pockets because team fights will be drawn out. And then you have to see patience when you're using the cooldowns at the correct time. And that's what I want to see. G2 showed it off beautifully. They were so patient in their team fights, and the rest of the LEC have to follow suit in this meta. Excel right now, patient around the Rift Herald for us, Gurren. 6,000 HP grouping is coming at Patrick. Remember, no flash. Chain of Corruption's on cooldown, and Excel are going to decide to back away. Not going to commit to this fight. Ray will hop over the wall and land himself a Winter's Bite. Throw down the Fissure. I didn't see that dredge line. I think it connected with a wall. A in fact, Dreams is taking a lot of damage. He turns and burns. And Patrick is able to run for now, forgiven his caught up. Got flash available to him. The barrel sends him forward. He's down. He could not flash. He was locked into place. Now Dreams throws out the ultimate. He gets a knockup. Odu and Abadage. They arrive. That's a massive knockup. And with all the twin fangs, it's a triple for Abadage. And it looks so good for a split second for Excel. But the cavalry arrived. It was the fact that Shalka made the rotation. But Mickey and Expect were locked out of the fight into the mid lane. So now Shalka, they pick up all the kills. They have the Rift Herald, and they're going to get some nice chip damage on this structure. Four and zero, and Abadag is Cassiopeia. Odawame, two, zero, and three on that horn. Expect is kind of sniffing around. He and Mickey can find something with that Realm of Death. Last breath, maybe, but not going to be able to right now. And instead, again, Shalka, they still remain in control despite taking a few heavy blows from Excel. But we do need to check on these reset timers because Abadage is feeling himself. Oh, he absolutely is. The exhaust comes down from Abadage. Here comes Expect, the two man petrifying gaze. Abadage, you are a monster. The shield comes up, keeps throwing out the miasma of the twin fangs, but in a two on one, he finally goes down. Yes, he was certainly feeling himself, and he styles again a very nice performance on the Cassiopeia now five and one. I was talking about the back timers because Cloud Dragon is up in 15 seconds, and I was curious who was going to try to get into position for it. Shalka did actually have the initial reset potential, but they actually walked for given top. They are consciously saying this cloud is not important to us. We are willing to trade it for something else. Oh, this is such a fun game to watch, and no pressure here from Shalka. XL will be able to secure the second dragon of the game, but at what cost? Uh, top lane wave is being pushed in heavily. Shalka are trying to push their vision line deep into enemy territory. Gonna, fire, uh, gonna have a lot of information to work with. And you know, we talked about that top lane tower that Expect was pushing five or so minutes ago. Still, still standing, still alive. So, gotta give some credit to Shalka for defending it. And now, all of a sudden, Excel, they've got to look for some more opportunities. I mean, or you could take the LS approach, and by that tower still being up there, the fact that Excel are pushing minion waves into it. I don't think it's necessarily one of those situations, though, because it's been Cassio that's been eating up. But it is something to always track when towers do sit up there, yes. how much farm they are kind of denying uh, as they're left to their own devices. And it's still small differences. Uh, 10 separating the mid laners, 10 separating the top laners. It's only Patrick that's maintained that plus 20. And with a second Herald going the way of Shalka, they're going to get that charged up boop, onto the middle tower. That will secure it. 
Frost, the observers really like your point. They're actually showing you the turrets killing the minions. And um, I can't take credit for this. Ellis talks a lot about this on his stream as well as the LCK cast, so shout out uh, up there. And it's when you have these towers up and you push these waves into them, um, these minions now are being picked up by Abadage, but whenever they hit that tower, they're actually just going nowhere. Yep. And so you just have to think up over time how much gold isn't going into your pockets, even though it feels like, okay, towers are down, that means I have more control over the map. But in situations like that, you gotta mm -hmm. do the math. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's uh, where do you prioritize your time? Where do you put your resources? And talking about resources, Patrick just picked himself up that Rage Blade. And we're getting close to the Infinity Edge for Mickey as well. So you have to feel once that's picked up, that's a big, gigantic go button to fight. Yeah, and, and so now we're going to kind of talk about like pockets in which teams feel stronger because of itemization. We talk about this all the time, but it kind of funnels into the dragon conversation as we get kind of closer and closer to that, that closing window of you must now fight for this Drake. And I feel like kind of an easy mode um, for at least the initial stages of this meta is have a late game insurance policy and know that when you have to fight for the, the soul, when you have to fight for that necessary dragon, that as long as you have late game scaling champions, like a Zaya, yeah. like a Cassiopeia, it doesn't matter what happens in the early game as long as you just neutralize everything and it doesn't snowball wildly out of control. And it feels like, uh, yeah, Abba's gotten some kills, but that was kind of like Schalke's mentality here because they have a Cassiopeia, they have a Zaya. Eventually, they are going to turn their eyes to these dragons and stop giving them away to Schalke, or excuse me, to Excel, and they're going to feel so strong when they do it. Yeah, absolutely the case. And slightly abstract question while we were setting up for the next fight, but do you think either of these teams will benefit more from the Cloud Soul. I'll give you a moment to ponder Nautilus. it. Because it is going Cassiopeia. to look like <laughs> an engage. And I will explain what that is in a moment. Now, let's quickly look at this. Kadril is waiting in the wings. Patrick is nearby. And Mickey can make it if a fight were to break out. As both teams are posturing, they're just setting themselves up, waiting for someone to miss it. We're uh, really fighting over mid lane priority. And like you're saying, everyone's just kind of playing defense and seeing what's going to happen, sniffing out if someone is going to misposition or to make a mistake. But no one is feeling confident enough to really bite down on this Baron. This is a tug of war between that mid lane and that vision line. And the eventual price that people are looking towards is going to be this Cloud Soul. Uh, so definitively, Better on the side of Shalka, passively gaining 10% movement speed. And I off your ultimate. Definitively. Oh, you, that's what you said. And there's that's a, what I heard. There's a lot of champions. Um, I really like the utility of Cloud, so there's a lot of champions in this game that make use of Cloud. I think, in my personal opinion, the best one is Nautilus. Nautilus used to be a once you got access. So definitively. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting words in her mouth. Of course not. Yeah, quote me. <laughs> but now, like, in, in context of this game, you know, uh, the obvious reasons here, Nautilus being able to chase and Locked down with the CC. Chain of Corruption was committed there. That could prove painful if Shaka can find another They engage. didn't find a kill. Yeah, I know, but if they get <laughs> you jumped out, they're down. in trouble. We're just, we're, we're making eyes. Uh, so the reason why I bring up Nautilus is because this time around, he's got the Ninja Tabi. Oh no, I'll hold it. Okay, he's good. He's got the Ninja Tabi, but it used to be that when Nautilus had Moby Boots, he didn't actually have to do anything. He didn't have to ult you, but yeah. it was the threat of having the movement speed of running at you with the ult that created so much zone and so much pressure. And so obviously on a cloud map uh, with Cloud Drake, it's going to kind of be the same thing. So we'll see how Dreams is able to kind of exert that pressure, even if he doesn't pull the trigger on the ult. Yeah, it's like those uh, whack-a-mole games. The, the threat of being Okay, hit. get excited, Trevor, because it's warded. All right, look at the mini-map. Great vision here. Shaka fully aware. XL are making the way in. Teleport coming down from Expect. He's going to be in the fight. Abadage is not going to be able to find the stun just yet. Now Baron is hammering away and forgive me. He flashes up the wall. kato has gone low. The first of four is Abadage. He's the most fed member of Shaka. It's the cost of Kedril, though. So far to one for one. The feathers bring all the damage back into the XL and forgiven by his time with the stopwatch. They continue to trade kills. One for one. Three down the side. Make that four for Schalke. Expect is now going to try and run down Dreams. He does not have that Cloud Soul to run away with, but he's able to escape with the dredge line. Four for three. No, four for four at the end of the fight. It was so close. Only two survivors from this great Baron play, and there was a lot of outplay. So let's talk of first and foremost the decision for Schalke to do this. They have the Cassiopeia, they have the Zion, they feel like if you leave it alone for a second, we can burn it. But Excel do show up just in the nick of time, and then it's outplay after outplay, especially for Forgiven on the back half of this fight, to get the flash out of Patrick into a stopwatch. And Patrick turned away from the petrifying gaze. Yes. Following Cassiopeia flying at him, 
he turns, he avoids the stun, and just turns it around. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the first few minutes of this game, I felt like Shelka were making some great punches, but at no point has Axel been out of this game. They got the first dragon. They got the first herald. They're tied for towers. The gold lead is irrelevant. And you can see when the team fights happen, these are so fun to watch. And with so many key summoners and ultimates down right now, and again, we talked about kind of those pockets, those windows of power, you can see in the itemization. Varus has three, uh, yeah. you've got two and a half on Zaya. So obviously in this current pocket, Acceler, again, we're gonna come in, we're gonna take the dragon, and that means your window is getting shorter and shorter, Shalka. I see your decisiveness to pull a trigger onto a Baron. The dragon fight is coming. You only have so much more time to ramp gold onto Forgiven and get him get him into a place where he's ready to fight. And one of the things I'm going to have a lot of fun about, uh, fun with, once we get some time to review these games and VODs, start looking at the decision-making and the tendencies of this XL squad. We know they've got a, a deep 10-man roster. We know Young Buck was brought in. The organization made changes. We know they won the Neo Surf Cup. But what I'm interested to see is, can we see the flair of Young Buck on how teams play and how they treat different aspects of the game? I haven't had the chance to quite digest it yet, but it's something we're gonna, we'll have a whole split to look at and talk about. Before we look at uh, Young Buck, I also do want to point towards Dylan uh, Falco, because I see Abadage right now on this Cassiopeia. He's a big deal. He's very powerful right now. And there's not once that Abadage has really looked towards that side lane. We talked about it in Champion Select that uh, a lot of other LEC teams would use Cassiopeia in that capacity because she is such a good duelist, especially if you can have Helios on Jarvan kind of shadow underneath her. Um, but Shalka last year, and it seems also this year, have this tendency where they just always want to group up, which don't get me wrong. Their comp is also strong there in a straight 5v5. And maybe if you have Forgiven on Zaya, you're like, it doesn't matter. I don't need to play a side lane. I just need to stand next to this guy. But it's things to keep track of like that. The yeah. fact that Shalka still haven't really diversified their play style. They don't feel super comfortable playing out into those side lanes. Um, and it continues to hold true. It does indeed. Uh, Multi-man stack all 10 players around the mid lane. Shalka are positioning themselves for feels like another Baron fight. Uh, just a quick reminder that Thanks to Orn, the Fireforge Cave, the Infernal Mask upgraded in Orn's inventory. Zonya's Paradox in Abadage's, as well as that Molten Edge sitting with Forgiven. So He's just making it rain. It is. Funny. I mean, he absolutely is. Level 15 in the moment, about to hit level 16, continuing to scale up. And we're now hitting what is, you know, Monday terms, the late game. Three full items pretty much across the board. Is that. Rapid Fire Cannon and Essence Reaver for Forgiven. So it's just, it's a lot of power in the hands. And I, I want to see if a team can get a, con a conclusive, uh, definitive team fight win, rather. We're coming to the, the climax of the game. It's going to come yes. down to probably the next one to two fights. I would say probably the next one fight, depending on how it goes, because that's going to transition to a massive objective, be it that Drake or be it that Baron. So do you know what XL has nothing of, Frostguren? Flashes, not a single one in their inventory. There is an engage already. Call of the Forge God comes up. Patrick is able to sidestep everything. He stays alive for so long. Torre's unbreakable wall blocks so much damage. There's the damage. Surprise! Re engage. Here comes Expect. He throws down the Realm of Death. He picks up a kill onto Dreams. Petrifying Gaze doesn't really find anybody. It does just to the back here, but not enough. Mickey manages to get knocked up in the air. He's running for his life. Manages to continue hammering away. There's a one for two at the time being. It is XL in control, but that was so close. But look at Gilius trying to get back as quickly as possible so he can try to dissuade XL from turning on the Baron. And it looks like it's worked. The fact that Shalka's jungler got out of that skirmish means the game will continue to kind of sit on the seesaw. But this was uh, Shalka walking into the meat grinder. Patrick just tore them apart. And Ture, that unbreakable blocks so much upfront damage. And Patrick, thanks to the Hurricane, you can see almost solo kills Dreams of Gilead. Yeah, and so important that the Varus ultimate locked in the background, Abadage and Forgiven from actually pushing through in that narrow quarter, delaying Zaya and Cassiopeia's damage output through the fight. Like you said, the Petrifying Gaze doesn't really find the targets that it needs, and the damage had been done. Expect got behind them, blew up the back line of Shalka, and forces them on the retreat. And of course, thanks to Gilius recalling, he has been able TP. to get back into the Baron Pit area. 5,000 HP, 4,000. This is going down. Gilius can he get inside the pit. He does it! He steals it! Gilius steals away the Baron! He gives up his life, but he gets 
What he came for. The fight isn't done yet. Glacial Prison goes down rather Fisher. Now all of a sudden, Chain of Corruption slowly starts to spread. Cajal does not have the ultimate available. Up and his pet fangate is not cooled out as his pet goes golden. We turn it into the dreams. With the help of Forgiven, he gets a kill. Now they're looking for expect. Look at the backside as Cajal's trying to re-engage. Forgiven, less than 50% HP. It's a 4v4, but that's a knock-up into the air. They've caught Cajal. Bellow's breath is burning down. 300 HP as Odo is not going to pick up the kill. It's Forgiven that brings it home. Shelka with Baron and the fight. Remember the name. This team is not just forgiven. It is not just Odawamne. It is not just a, what, five and three Cassiopeia. Gilius comes up huge into the pit, finds the steal. They get the team fight, and it's Shalka knocking on the front door. This is beautiful play. 15 kills. I wouldn't go that far. 11. <laughs> the fun. It is fun. It is enjoyable, and it's going to be another Cloud Drake secured by Abadage. We can ignore the question, what is a side lane for now, right? Because <laughs> there's been a lot of mid lane for the last few minutes. But this is that uh, barrier. But it goes back frost. This is like a Mr. Fantastic move. Fortune like, look at the stretch him. arm on that to get in the pit. Unbelievable. <laughs> but it goes back to what you were saying. If Gilius didn't, you know, uh, get back and recall when he did, one second would have been the difference from being unable to secure the steal. It's also both teams willing to be decisive on imperfect information. The fact that you had Schalke and then Excel kind of back to back saying, no, 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 we're going to try to force and burn this Baron down. They absolutely did. Taking a look at how the rest of this team fight plays out, Kendall was really just looking for an opportunity to re-engage. Managed to do so, and that volcanic uh, rupture just catching him out. Yeah, super uh, great heads up from Odoamne and Dreams to again be that defensive lineman, yes. the Bash Brothers, if you will, around Little Zaya there. It's very exciting when you think about a team. If a team is able to play these like team fight comps, and you've got players like Abadage or Forgiven who you expect to perform at a specific level. I want to see how they grow, of course, and for the time being, they now have a huge advantage. Got that Baron buff, got themselves a 4,000 gold lead. And some split chance here in Berlin, actually. I think I'm hearing both teams' names. Neither one particularly out uh, uh, chanting the other. Abadag is going to take the fifth tower of the game for Schalke in the top lane. And now they've just split their resources. They're ushering in the conga line of minions. Trying to use the last 20 seconds of this Baron Bar. Chuck did a good job, though, syncing uh, and timing both the waves. However, the fact that you have two crashing waves at the same time, so getting really nice ship damage, especially on that mid tower. Okay, key flashes. Expect Cajal and Mickey is down. But the ultimate for Forgiven uh, is up, despite him missing his flash. So your eyes are really going to be on Cajal. Like, can he make or break with this barrel? And can Patrick follow it up with a nice chains of corruption? And notice who is stepping further forward. Abadagi with a flash stayed at the tower longer than Forgiven, who was flashless. So they managed to push the waves in. They still have an inner turret in the bottom lane to secure that Shalka's perspective. And the Baron has timed out. So two and a half minutes till that one, five seconds Ooh. after that. The Cloud Drake is up. They're baiting with Abadage. They're like, look at this. He's so delicious. And Cajal just body slams away. I think he almost got caught there. I was ramping up the scream, but it didn't happen. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like you said, the Baron has teetered out. Uh, Schalke need to take care of that bottom wave. The Cloud Drake will be spawning in about two minutes, but we're, we're past that point. Everyone's got kind of their core itemization. It's going to come down to execution on these fights and these skirmishes. And uh, for the time being, we've seen a mixed bag. It's, it's been a fun one. Uh, after 33 Everyone's minutes of gameplay... Everyone's had their moment in the spotlight. I love it. I love it. After 33 minutes of gameplay, Frost, you uh, had a, a, a pre-split sort of power ranking, if you will. Um, how would you rate the team's performance 30 minutes in from what we've seen versus what you were expecting, you know, of these players and of these organizations? Hmm. I think people are, uh, I think, under-representing Excel. I think it's kind of the That's easiest fair. place to start there because I feel like everyone's talking about, you know, the origins, the Fanatics, the G2s. No one's really talking about Excel Misfits that kind of fly underneath the radar. People saw the Neo Surf Cup, and I think they just assumed, ah, oh, these are two bottom of the table teams and you're basically watching like low quality League of Legends. I don't think that's true. Definitely I think I um, it's super easy to say that Excel just kind of made upgrades across the roster. I really like the addition of Patrick and Torre. And then on the other side of Schalke, it, I don't need to drum up the hype for yes, Schalke. Exactly. They do it all on their own. <laughs> I want to go back to the Excel point very quickly though, because I, I, I really like the sentiment that you said that there's upgrades pretty much across the board, you know, in terms of players they have picked up in support stuff. They picked up the question that I do not have an answer to yet is how much better, right? And that's what we're going to see over time. This game is by no means over. 
um, a key ultimate from Mickey, who has three and a half items for now. Give Patrick enough time with four items, and he'll be able to burn through even Oda Wamne's Orn. Um, you know, there's still possibility, but they just their margin for error is so much smaller. Yeah, like, I agree with you. I think it, it comes down to execution. Both these team comps have uh, still windows for victory. I'll hold it, though, as Gilius has gone very Patrick. deep on Patrick. He held the flash for so long, Foscur, and Gilius is now below 100 HP. The Fissure goes up, that knock up! Arpadage stays alive for a few seconds longer. He uses the Hourglass, managed to stay alive. Now expect he does the same. Odo is on the front line, 3,500 HP. Forgiven, playing front line EDC. He side flashes. Can Continues throwing out the feathers, throwing out the altars, oh. feather storm to dodge away from the engage from Cadrill. He stays alive long enough to keep putting the damage down. Man, the fight's not over yet as Odo will just about get burned. Remember, the fight started with Patrick getting jumped on and the fight ends with Patrick getting the kill. I love tank feathers because you get to see so much more. Uh, so obviously the first part of that fight, Gilly is just like, nah, we're going to fight now. Just goes to slam dunk on Patrick immediately regrets his choice. And then the back half for Given just going God given mode as now the Baron and a TP back in. This is fast. Gilius is across map. He's not there for this. No, he's not. Abadaga can make it for the follow up fight. Petrifying Gaze is available. Baron is not being burned down quickly enough. There is some support. They have to coming. fight. They don't have a smite. Gilius is going to make his way in. Three and a half thousand. Cadrill is the only to go over. Throws the barrel. Sends for given away. But the Baron is enlisted to help Shulker. Abadaga with the Petrifying Gaze. Gaze. Patrick gets the double. He's not done yet. Yet, turns his attention to Abadage, who's locked inside the realm of death. Piercing arrow comes out. That's a triple. Actually kills Secured by Cadrill. In fact, crucially, the Baron was interrupted and Gilius is alive. He's done it once. CP coming back in from Odo. Can he do it again? Call of the Forge God. It is available. Blow the Yawn Horn and bring the game to a close. Not yet. Look, Shelka lost the fight but they prevented the objective going down. That was such a smart call from Excel, though, to see that the dragon goes down and that Gilius is across map to immediately turn on the Baron. It almost pays out for them. Expect with the flash to grab hold of Forgiven. Okay, we gotta go all the way back. <laughs> now remember, Gilius tries to dunk on Patrick. It's Patrick that then dunks on Gilius. Gilius like, I'm out, man. I don't want anything to do with this. And check out expects Hourglass to dodge this Cassiopeia ultimate. Oh, ha. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of viewers making that sound effect right now. But all credit. Wait, I think he might have altered. I can never tell with the spectator. He manages to also like side flash and then feather storm the follow up engage from uh, I think it was a uh, Cadrill there. Just fantastic individual play in what was an extremely exciting fight. I feel like I can never see the Mordekaiser green enough. Hold up. <laughs> this was the replay of the follow up fight as. Uh, Shelka were able to dissuade the Baron, the mini-map. Oh, see, I thought I was already, I, I, know, I, I was know. back I got in, you. I was like, I okay. Got <laughs> I got you, Frosco, because the teams are poising to fight. Yeah, the uh, flash from Expect there to grab hold of Forgiven in front of the Baron fight. If Forgiven survives there, that might be the Baron for Shalka. so... Yeah, absolutely. I knife's mean, edge. There, there are so many plays that you can break down this game. Keep your eyes on the items. Um, you know, Abadage, five items completed for now. A fifth secured for Patrick. 68k, 65k. 17 kills, 15. All oh, the tension is building. The engage comes out somewhat. Watch Cadrill. Come down. Realm of Death throws down. Odo and Expect, they're locked inside. But watch Cadrill. What's he going to do with the ultimate? And how much damage will Mickey do on the follow-up? That's the big thing. Okay, not going to find it just yet. I'm looking for the explosive cards. There goes out the ultimate from Dreams. The knockout, Gilius manages to put down the Cataclysm. It's a trade, one for one. Jungle for top pitch, fine gaze. Locked down Torrey. Unbreakable wall, still standing, still alive. It's saved Excel. Torrey's unbreakable wall blocks all the damage. And Patrick puts the nails in the coffin. And it is the bot lane from Excel that popped off. Cage's ultimate came out and Mickey wasn't even near it. There was no fall. But I thought for sure Excel were done. But Patrick and Torrey plant their feet and finish off that team fight. 30 second death timers as the base is now being pushed after being down the entirety of the game. XL stand up and say we will not go down without a fight. The world was yelling, God given is back. And XL said, hello, this is Patrick. XL take down Shalka. Be your best call. Oh man, that was fun. <laughs>
We saw flashes from both teams, a lot of individual uh, flexing across the board from both players, but huge credit to Excel. They controlled the Dragons, they controlled the Rift Heralds. It was just a very methodical game, and it was really kind of those those flashes of brilliance from Schalke that they were able to kind of match one, two punches. But Excel just played really clean League of Legends, and I'm going to have to make the assumption, I'm going to say, good job, Young Buck. You have a very talented crew of players. I think Excel made upgrades kind of across the board, and you're starting to see the fruits of that labor. It was, uh, it was definitely a masterclass in some individual ability. Some of the outplays and individual moments uh, were fantastic. It was super fun. You can question some of the mid-game calls, of course, but very exciting, very fun, and a very, very interesting way to start off the split. But given his debut back on stage after three years, you can see elements of 